in like the the very first uh, initial reading of uh, the scriptures for Sunday, you know, it, it was like instinctually my body was like, where is the environment? <laughs> you know, where how, how could I preach about uh, creation care? But then I remembered what my um, professor, my homiletics professor, preaching professor in in seminary said. You know that um, oftentimes we we wait for like Black History Month to talk about racial injustice or uh, from the, in, in a scriptural perspective, or we wait for Earth Day to talk about uh, nature and uh, the environment or, you know, and so on. And uh, the, the reality is that's us, that's our lens that we, we put on the gospel. But the reality is that Jesus's, Jesus's uh, time in this earth, all those issues were there and present. Um, and so in all his, his stories, the, it, um, you know, these themes of injustice, uh, racial discrimination, um, the environment, um, in, you know, uh, issues on women and inequality, they're all present there. And so um, I want to liberate us as preachers to, um, you know, look at scripture for, for what it is, for the story that it is, and to dig deep and, and see, you know, the context that Jesus is saying these words in, um, and to, uh, you know, be, be free to, to explore those issues, even on days that don't, <laughs> that aren't Black History Month or so on, or Earth Day. And so um, in today's scripture, uh, creation and creation care is very much present there. Um, and so let's, let's get in the dirt and dig and learn a little bit about um, Jesus' story and how that relates. Um, well, in the gospel, we begin with the question, you know, by whose authority do you do this, right? Um, the, the Pharisees and spiritual leaders ask that um, of Jesus. And a little bit of the context, Jesus has just arrived in Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, and he went into the temple and cleared the temple. Uh, and, the, and so this is the next day. And he's out there preaching again. And so that question comes with some context of, you know, Jesus doing things that challenge the authority of his time. Um, but the way that uh, the scholar, you know, the, the, the folks who arranged the, uh, the canon and so on, they put it as the uh, individual question. So um, this is, this is a, a question also just in general, Jesus. By whose authority are you doing all these things? And by whose authority are you challenging us, right? And it's very easy to put yourself next to Jesus. I'm one of the apostles, of course. You know, I'm Peter, I'm Paul, or not Paul, I'm, I'm John or Matthew or, or whatnot. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think we can also put ourselves in the places of the Pharisees and the teachers a lot and and you know and say jesus but by whose authority are you challenging us to change to turn a different way to see god in a different way and then jesus uses uh a story uh or or a, asks a question and uses a story um by to answer the question right and and so you know first he says you know john you, you, I'll answer if you answer me, and it talks about John, and whose authority did John baptize? Um, and then he tells us uh, a parable about two brothers, uh, you know, that a father who owns a vineyard uh, asks the brothers to come and help, and one says that he's not going to do it, but then he changes his mind. And then the other one says, yes, I will do it, but changes his mind as well and doesn't go. So the first one does, didn't want to go, but changes his mind and does go and help. The second one promised to go and doesn't go and help. And so, um, and then Jesus asked, you know, who, who did right? Who was the, the righteous brother in this? And they begrudgingly answer, well, the one who did it, the one who went out and actually did it, even though they changed their mind. And, and so um, Jesus, again, for the second Sunday, and then, and really for many Sundays now uh, this year, uses an example of a uh, vineyard, a vineyard, but also of nature, right? And a vineyard is interesting because a vineyard, um, 
as opposed to like the forest or a field or whatnot. A vineyard, um, especially in Jesus's time, uh, su su suggests a harmony with, um, with the earth, right? The earth produces something and you work with the earth to produce that, um, that thing that you want, the, the, the grapes, right? Um, that you can make all these wonderful things with. And so there, there's, a, there's a harmony and relationship with the earth, you working together. And what's interesting about this image of a, of a vineyard is that um, it suggests that the kingdom of God isn't this place void of our relationship with the earth. It, it's a, right, it isn't just like wonderful forest that never has had any humans and now you can come in. But the, the image of the kingdom of God that, uh, that, that Jesus often uses is us in relationship with the earth in harmony, right? That, that that presents a closer image to the kingdom of God. There is human presence, but it's harmonious. It's uh, healthy. Um, and, and so um, that's interesting that, again, Jesus uses the image of a vineyard. And then which is the right one, right? Who, who does right? And it's like, well, it's the one that did something, the one that does something, the one that takes action. Um, that's the righteous brother or the righteous son. And so um, in thinking about, uh, you know, um, environmental theology and uh, creation care and so on, one of the, the uh, beliefs is that God lives in creation, right? That, that, you know, oftentimes we think God is in heaven, creation's down here, we can do whatever we want down here. But uh, environmental theology says that, no, God lives in the creation. And in um, this Sunday's second reading, uh, Paul writes to Philippians and he says, for it is God who is at work in you. So God is working in us and by extension in all of creation. And so um, when that question then from the very beginning of the gospel comes up and it says, you know, by whose authority, Jesus, are you doing this, right? Um, they ask, they ask that because they're expecting Jesus to uh, either say from God and trip them and say, well, no, God gave us the authority or use some other into somebody else's name. And then they can say, oh, that's a false prophet or whatever. It's, you know, we're, you know, we follow God. And what, what Jesus, uh, then says, suggests is he points to John the Baptist, which is a person that is new like it's it, it's a brand new theologian or brand new like prophet like person it's not like elijah or isaiah or something like that that um had this movement that challenged the authority um in a in a way that that uh, lifted up those who were um who were low who were considered to be nobodies right uh, John's ministry lifted those up and baptized them alongside rich people and people of power uh, and then proclaimed them all uh, children of God. And so um, that idea of, of the lifting up of those who uh, are lowly and um, would really challenge the Pharisees and saying, you know, we have the authority. How come you, this no, nobody preacher from outside the city is saying now now you have some sort of authority to tell us how to run the temple and whenever um authority is challenged authority pushes back right and um as those who believe that god is in lives in creation and moves in creation um what we're doing is challenging authority and saying you know we god is asking god you know we need to change the way that we do things the way that we treat the earth the way that we treat each other uh we need to do uh, a cultural physical spiritual change uh in this whole planet not just in one little area or in a particular theological way it's a whole different way of interacting with the world and so that question will come up and they will say, who, by whose authority are you asking me to not drink from a, bot, you know, a plastic bottle? Who, like, is my money, I can do whatever I want with it. 
you know, by whose authority is saying that we have to stop investing in, in oil? It makes me lo lots of money. Like, by whose authority is saying that we don't dig in that area or don't knock down that forest? You know, I have papers from the government that says that I can do it. Um, and, and so just like Jesus, uh, I think we will have to ask by who, you know, answer that, by whose authority are we, you know, challenging people to be, to change fundamentally in the way that they interact with creation and each other um, and think of the world. And so um, the way that Jesus uh, points or answers that is saying, you know, there is power in tradition. There is power in, in political authority, absolutely. But there is also power in the spirit. Power in the spirit and how the spirit moves uh, in the world. And by pointing to John, this new move, kind of new movement that happened, it's un like the Pharisees were stuck because it was undeniable that the spirit was moving in John's ministry, right? They even they were terrified of saying it was from, it was uh, uh, because of a human. It was from, it came from humans because they knew that the people would stone them because they the people there knew John the Baptist and the people knew, there knew his ministry, and so they would be caught in a lie. Um, and so, the power, you know, the power that Jesus is claiming is of God doing something new. And that the spirit was moving powerfully in what God was was doing there, and even if it goes against what tradition suggests or or what the power the political power suggests, the spirit is moving in a new way, and that's where the authority is coming. And so, um, yes, we're asking people to do something different and new and to change, but that does that but that power. Uh, is is coming from what God is doing now, right? Um, we are seeing the impact that the way that we have traditionally treated the world is is causing, and the spirit is moving and it is coming not from places of power but from the people from and especially from those who are being heavily affected by this. We mentioned earlier how climate change is affecting poverty and uh, people's health and, and so on. And typically it's the lowly, those that John lifted up, those that Jesus lifted up, um, those are the ones that it ha is affecting the most. And so um, the spirit is doing something new. As Paul says, you know, God is working in us. God is working in creation. And um, there is nothing there, you know, the, we can claim that power. We can claim the power of the spirit and, and say that, um, you know, that God lives in creation. And as, uh, and, uh, as part of creation is moving us, is inviting us, it's challenging us to do something different now before, before it's too late. Um, the... The image again of the of the vineyard comes up uh, again this time uh, this Sunday, and you know the the vineyard uh, relationship again it, it's this harmony with nature, harmony with creation, and the theology around or around farming at that time or the way that farming was like in Jewish culture at that time was that you always left something in the fields, right? You always left, uh, you didn't harvest everything. You left something in the field so that the poor could come, the poor and widows and orphans could come and gather. Um, and also, intentionally, unintentionally, animals could come and gather and pick it and so on. So there, there was, uh, again, this relationship where you received this great treasure, this great gift, you worked with nature, but then you also left uh, something there, an offering for those uh, for for those that would come after you, right? And in Paul's uh, second reading, you know, Paul uh, is talking to the Philippians, and you know, he says, "Look not to your own interests, but 
to those of others. And often, a lot of the traditional thinking of creation is me and now, and not thinking about what comes after those that those that are uh, the others, right? Those that come after, um, those that uh, come after, uh, whether it's animals or humans or whatnot. And so we're invited another, uh, we're invited to think beyond us, beyond me, and how this affects, um, how this affects us all. And so um, we, we, when we're asked about uh, authority, when we're asked about um, why we challenge those in power, why we challenge each other in doing better, um, one of the another another um, response that we can have is that you know God calls us to think beyond just ourselves and beyond just one generation, but um, further. Um, not just um, beyond, not just uh, those that are affected now, but to think of those that will come after. I think I got. I think I just got the two-minute response uh, thing, and I think I'll just leave it there. If that's okay. It's wonderful, all of it. 